So today we are continuing our week here at Goggleworks, where we've been interviewing people about their passions for art. Goggleworks is an old factory, and as we know, they have classes here such as pottery, glass blowing, ceramics, painting, sketching, even dance, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And so Carol Siegel is joining us now. Carol, can you tell us what your passion is and where it started for you? Okay. My passion has always been art and it started when I was very young in elementary school. I loved to draw. That was my thing. That was what I was known as in class. I was the artist and as I got older I discovered that I was pretty good and wanted to go to art school to become an art teacher but unfortunately for me I didn't finish so I never did become an art teacher. But luckily for me I found myself in a job that uh, appreciated my ability to art direct and I ended up moving from New York to Reading and luckily near Goggle Works for me in Pennsylvania, uh, in Pennsylvania. and I had a wonderful career in an art related field I was a, basically creative director of a department of really talented artists and uh, from and I also traveled around the country interviewing and getting work from artists and so I spent my whole career, 35 years or so, working with art, but not necessarily doing my own art. So somewhere along the line, when I had a pretty stressful executive position, I decided to take a class. And there was, there is another facility in the Reading area that offers classes before Goggle Works had opened. And so I took a portrait class there and discovered that I love pastels. And Portrait meaning drawing portrait, or painting? Yeah, portrait, pastel portrait. I did a portrait, took a portrait class. I could have done any number of media, but I chose pastel. And I loved it because it's so direct. It's from your hand to the paper. There's no tool, there's no nothing. It's, just, it's very tactile. Mm -hmm. And I really love that. And so when I had time to do my own art, that's what I would do. I would do uh, pastels and usually faces because there's, you'll never run out of faces, basically. But you know, some people say that faces are the hardest part. I mean, I'm I looking know. at this piece right here. First of all, when you walked in with it, I thought it was an actual baby, and then, oh, the, and then, that? no, I'm, I, I actually was a little, what, you know, what is that? It was so real oh, looking, but you. then when you look at it, it's not quite right to be a real baby, That, but the, I don't know. I mean, it's just the face on this oh, it's just you. amazing to me thank you so I, I uh, how I ended up at Goggle Works would be um, I was here doing some charity work uh, a fundraising for, for Goggle Works and I went into the ceramic studio out of curiosity and James the manager told me about it and I thought this is a great uh, next step for me because at the time I was retired from this job I had more time I did want to explore my own art and at that point really only had any proficiency in pastels but working with clay and doing the same thing with clay was really appealing that to just me. blows my mind I mean this is only how long ago two and a half years ago two and a half years yeah. ago and obviously I'm, I'm not a professional Thank I don't you. profess to be a professional in any in any of the conversations yeah. that I have the whole time that I am at Goggle Works but to me I mean it's just so real you I you seem proficient in this in this art thank you I think it's something that well I do like to do faces like I said and I've always done faces but there's just something wonderful about doing it in three dimensions and exactly. and I love how direct it is that I'm maneuvering the clay and when I first started doing it uh, here at Goggle Works I took a hunk of clay and thought let's see if I can make a head and I used to characterize it as I would let the clay tell me what the head would be and it would come out you know I would basically start the structure and then I would see if it's male or female or young or old and the first couple of pieces that I did that really was how it happened and now I go into it a little bit more with a plan and if I got to spend more time here which my goal is to spend more time here but I would go in with sketches and photographs I mean I think in order for me to get better that's what I have to do this one uh, came from my head I didn't 
you know, but it's just a matter of knowing where the features are and doing it enough to basically know it. But uh, I'm taking a lot of classes. I'm taking a lot of workshops here and around the area trying to get better. So. It's just that you know that this had to have always been inside you. You know, I just, when I see Bursting this... Bursting in, waiting to come out. No, I really, <laughs> I really feel like this is a, yeah. a talent that you always had. You just didn't know you had it. It just revealed itself to you over time. Well, I think I, I always knew that I was more interested and maybe a little bit better than average, but I never had any confidence that I was really good at it, and I still don't, but I'm getting better. But be, because I spent my whole adult life working with professional artists, painters, mostly painters, and... They, I have had to learn that they've been at it for 20, 30, 40, 50 years, and they do it full time. I was dealing with professionals, and so they were really dedicating all of their time to it. And when I first thought of doing my own, I was frankly intimidated by the message in my head, like, you're not as good as those people. The, but. Right, I've, limiting beliefs, which yeah, self-doubt, limiting beliefs. Yeah. I mean, it's what we talk about this so often on the show, and I've been talking about it today, that we hold ourselves back. Yes, because it's quite freeing when you finally say, you know, you're, I, I, I've said to myself, I can't compare myself to those people, which I did for years while I was working with them and even years afterwards. Oh, my God, I can't draw this, and I can't do that, and this one is so good at this. And I... I've let it go and, and tried to just embrace the truth is, am I better than I was last month? Or if I'm not, yesterday. did I make a mistake, yesterday? you know, can I, can I correct it? What mm -hmm. am I learning from it? And really, I hope I live as long as my mother did, because that means I've got a few more decades to go, which would be great. And I don't want to spread myself thin and do a bunch of other things. I want to really focus on sculpture and I have a studio at home where I still am going back and forth and doing pastels every now and then, thinking, mm -hmm. oh, well, this is really fun, because when I do things in three dimensions, or I take a class or workshop, and I learn the structure, the anatomy of the face, and I do it in three dimensions, and I can look at it that way, then I go back and draw, and I'm drawing so much better than I used to, because I can imagine depth and shape better, because I'm practicing it in three dimensions. So it's... I don't think I'll ever run out of uh, interest in ideas for, fate, like I said, faces, but also approaching them. In, there's so many different ways to approach so many different faces with clay and with pastels. And they're both, you know, with my fingertips, which is great. And I, I think, too, you touch on something, because I'm a writer, so even just for writers, are people of the arts of any kind, you know, using mentors to strengthen your craft without comparing yourself to where they are when they produce it. And so often, like you said too, they've been at it so much longer. You know, and it, things just take time. I, mean, I cannot believe the progress you've made in just a couple of years, I mean, that seriously. And pastels, the colors, I mean, are, are colors that, you know, I think that is your aesthetic. Your love for pastels, just like, you know, we talked to James, and he has a very distinct aesthetic within his work, and mm -hmm. uses the, the swipe marks, and Birdie's mm -hmm. aesthetic is the box tops and the buttons, mm -hmm. and, and Melissa's is just that earth. Earthy, you know, yes. She's very yeah. earthy. Right. You know, I think you're just, that's how people d develop their style. It's, yeah, the process of doing that is really interesting, because at first, I started just seeing if I could make it look like something. Mm -hmm. And, oh, well, yeah, that looks like a head. Okay, I can do that. Now let's see if I can do another one. Maybe I did it once. <laughs> but the process of trying to develop a style, trying to see what's comfortable, trying to see what other people react to, because this was in a show we had, an opening last night, and this piece was in the show, and it got a lot of attention. And that's the first time that I've ever been in a show, and it was like, oh, It was eye-catching to wow. me immediately. <laughs> What do you think you've learned about yourself through this process? Um, well, I've learned uh, a lot of things, actually. One of them is that I have a passion for something that I'm willing to stick with and uh, make everything else get out of the way and move forward with it. I don't, I hate being bored. I'm restless. 
And when I come into the studio and work, whether it's in my studio at home with pastels or at Gaga Works with clay, time's irrelevant. I'm always late for dinner when I'm here because I, I'm so, uh, I'm, I'm just inside of it. it. It's just the most wonderful feeling. And to me, that's it. I mean, getting good at it or getting better at it or evolving into a style will be wonderful. And I, I believe it will happen and I believe that I will get better. But the process of doing it is so pleasurable for me that uh, I guess that's, you know, I've learned that, that there is something that I care that much about that I would just stick with it and uh, nothing will stop me. <laughs> and, and that's exactly what they say when you find your passion for something yes. is that yeah. everything else you will just put to the side so that you can focus on that. And thing. when I don't, when, I'm, when, I, when life gets in the way, you get I, mad. I do. Yeah. I do. I mean, I just want to be here. And I, so I'm now I'm taking a wheel throwing class, which I came from this morning the first time. And now I know I'll be here at least every Saturday. And now I know that I'll come during the week because I have to work on the piece that I worked on on Saturday. And so I'm back in the groove. But life does have a way of demanding things of you. So, for people, because you know, my job is to try to get people to hear the stories of my guests and be inspired to incorporate something that they love so much. So, if we're talking about just anything, and it doesn't even have to, to be sculpture or ceramics or right. pastels or art, but if somebody incorporates something they love into their lives, what do you think they could envision? What, would they, what do they need to see or feel? Because I hear so much passion and feeling coming from you right now. Well, first of all, I think that there's an, an infinite number of things that people can do and, and be, but do with their time. It's a matter of examining what it is that you are passionate about. And it's easy as an artist to say, well, art, you know, and then, and then break it down and make it more specific than that. But not everybody is an artist. People can have passion for teaching, uh, cooking, gardening. And whatever, whatever it happens to be, whatever the interest is, if you if you pursue it and you dig into it, it there's no end to it. There's no end to what you can learn because if it's a new passion, a new interest, you you certainly have everywhere to go with it. You're not an expert yet, so so they you, they could envision themselves learning a lot of new things. Starting and, with something, yeah, starting right. at the beginning, whether it's online. I, did, I learned a lot of things online. I've looked at and that would be my YouTube. next question: yeah. is how do they explore that? And you just absolutely use the the internet is such it's a great amazing. resource. YouTube is wonderful, mm -hmm. and people are very generous uh, with their time and their talents on YouTube to put out videos mm -hmm. to teach you how to do things. I've watched many sculpture videos. And I've watched, one time I, I went online and I found one and I looked at how long it was going to be, like how much time do I have to devote to watching this? And, I, and it said five point something point something. I went, oh, that can't be five hours. It was literally five hours. It was an entire sculpture done of a woman, a model sitting there with calipers and the whole thing. And he started it from the very beginning, from the bag of clay, showed the, his tools. I've watched it three times. Wow! Wow! <laughs> because uh, it's just a wonderful lesson to, and if I get a little bit better, more experienced, and then I go back and watch it again, do you I'm know the name it of differently. that? Right. Absolutely. Uh, do you know that? Well, you know what? Maybe you can email me that link, and we'll put it okay. in the show notes because okay. anybody interested in in sculpture would yeah. be able to start at home. You know, and maybe we should say that would be the first step for their plan if they're into sculpture. It would be so inspiring. Okay. So. Yeah. Okay. Overall, if people were to incorporate something new, some new passion into their lives, what, what do you think that first step would be to execute? Well, alert, uh, talking to somebody who already is involved in it. Uh, if you're, you know, for example, if your passion is giving back to the community and then you just have to start talking to different organizations. If your passion is art, I would say go online is the first the first step. And if you live in a community, we're lucky enough to live in a community where there is goggle works and all these classes. But you know, Which you have to amazing. learn from other people. So you have to go out, you know, put yourself out there, find somebody who's a step ahead of you on the path, mm -hmm. or ten steps ahead of you on the path, and begin. Sitting home and thinking about it isn't good enough. No, you have to get out there and start. And I would say a lot of false starts are fine. Because if you think you might have 
not a whole lot of passion about something, but a little bit of an interest here and here and here, the way to find out is to start to do it. And I did not know how I felt about clay until I started playing with clay, until they gave me a bag of clay and I started doing it. I, you know, So I was interested in art and interested in faces, but the real passion comes from really doing it, really immersing yourself in it, making time for it. How is this different from your career? Because in your career, I feel like you were in positions where you were very much in control, you did a lot of collaboration, you worked with other people, and this seems very solita solitary. How does that feel? There was an adjustment to that. When I first retired, I, I you know, sort of selfishly noted, I mean, I had a lot of reactions. One of them was, nobody cares what I think anymore. That was a big one because I ran a department and people were constantly in my office asking for approval or advice or opinion or whatever. And it was like, oh, nobody really cares about my opinion anymore. That was a little tough. I spent a lot of time alone uh, and I missed the people that I worked with, I have to admit. that was re I really missed having people around me. And so I looked very carefully at what I can do next. And I did other things. I, I spent a lot of time with my mother. I did do some charity work, uh, but not, nothing was really fulfilling and, until I discovered Goggleworks, until I took that class, the first, you know, the first session there. Um, and what I discovered by doing it was, it's a different skill set. It's not, it's still me. My skill set at work was, I had to be out there, I had to be working with other people all the time. This, I could be doing this at home, not with as much pleasure. The thing about the studio at Goggleworks is, I what I'm doing, I'm very much in it. I'm I don't socialize, I don't talk. When I first started going there, I thought, I'm just going to do this. I don't really have to be friendly, and I don't. That's not really why I'm here. I just it's just me and the clay, and I'm just going to ignore everybody else. Well, mm -hmm. that's not going to happen at Goggleworks because everybody here is so supportive. Everybody is friendly, so now there's a whole group of people that I've become friends with. Right. So, in a way, it's not so solitary anymore because when I do go in there and there's nobody there, it's fine. I'm good because it's me and the person I'm creating, basically. Mm -hmm. But when there are other people around, um, then it's really, I'm, I go back and forth from being really focused to being more social. And when somebody comes in the room that I haven't seen in a while, I can stop what I'm doing. So it's a very nice balance. But that's the other thing I think for people when they bring a passion into their lives and they develop it, they're not just getting the skill, the knowledge, the experience, the, the outcome or the product, but they're changing their entire lives, their network of people. Oh yes. You know, and then you're yes. getting invited to different things mm -hmm. and you're going out for dinner and mm -hmm. you're, you know, we have a book club. celebrating birthdays, doing yes. book. I mean, that's yeah. the thing. If we sit home and we don't l seek out these opportunities for ourselves, you know, we're cutting ourselves short and we're just not experiencing. Yes, there's more to life than just going shopping. Mm -hmm which I think there was some periods in my life where I thought, well, retail therapy, you know, I'm sitting here, I'm bored. I don't have anybody to talk to. I guess I'll go shopping. And uh, no, no. It's, everybody loves things. What I don't mean things. I mean, everybody has a love for something. Right. And like I said, I know that not everybody is an artist, but as I look around, if I think of my friends, um, one of my friends became uh she was a teacher, she was a reading teacher, mm -hmm. and now she's a chef and she teaches cooking in her home. And she took classes to learn how to do that and now she's giving instruction to other people. I mean, the whole idea of retiring and then having a whole new career, like that last part of your life. An encore career. And if you can have it as a career, great, and if, and in some cases that, that, that's what people want to do and I didn't really think that I was ever going to do that. But I'm starting to change my mind. I'm starting to think, well, maybe I would show in a gallery. Maybe I would be able, willing and able to sell my work. And maybe people would really want to enjoy it in their homes. And That's maybe like a big the... thing for me. That's a real stretch for me, believe me. I'm still on the process of looking at that. And maybe all of the experience that you had into your life until right now has led you to that. Because yes. I was thinking that earlier that I'm curious if all of your work experience, if you coupled that with your art experience, what you would do with that. And I used to think when I first retired that that's just what I would do. I would take all that experience in marketing and 
uh, you know, the knowledge of the, because I had to create art, hundreds of different designs a year for the, I worked for a craft company that made needle craft kits and uh, paint by number kits and rubber stamping and scrapbooking. So I had to really know what people wanted. And I used to think when I retired that it would be easy for me to do that, just to continue, find a new product and pursue that. But it turned out that I really didn't want to um, work that hard. <laughs> I really wanted to just take a break from it because it was a long and very challenging career. So I just wanted to, uh, you know. But you may apply it. But now I'm, yeah, now it's, it's all in there, I'm afraid. And now I'm starting to think it might be coming out again. And you're yes. starting to it's see like, how you can yes, benefit yes. yourself with it. And it is, I think, some instinct that whether it was born in me or developed over all those years uh, in my position but yeah I think that's where my mind does go I have to admit so what final thoughts would you like to leave everybody with today? Well, I think that the the confidence uh, comes from being active in the world and and be doing something that you really love and getting better at it and I would say to, to, to be motivated to go out there and do whatever it is that you love to do Every little baby step you take is going to get you to, to some place that you're going to love to be. And and just thinking about it and staying home and not doing anything about it is what a waste of your life. Life is too short. Life is too short. That's a good one. <laughs> it is. You know, it really is. Every day just flies by. Now, now it's the weekend. Now it's Monday again. Now, oh my God, before you know it, it's going to be the next season and then it's Christmas. And... I've lived long enough to know that it really is true what they say, that the older you get, the faster it goes. And I want to fill my life with activities and knowledge and joy and not sit back, but I want to be involved in it. And I'm very lucky. I think I found the place to, to do that for me. Is I there, would wish that for everyone. Me, <laughs> me as well. Yeah. Is there a place where people can check out your work online? Do you have anything posted? No, I'm not quite there yet, no. Okay. I don't. Well, you know what? Are you on Facebook? Uh-huh. Maybe we can make you a part of my private group on Facebook so people could reach out to you that way. Okay. Okay, sounds good. Right, Thank you so much great. for speaking with us today. Thank you. I just that love it. Fun. I love where you've been, where you are, and where I think you're going. I think it's exciting. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> That's it for today, everybody. Please remember, you motivate me. I'm Lynette Renda. And we love, we love, and we hate, we hate, and we take